All right, Matt. So Saturday night, there was a lot of movement in the heavyweight division. Derek Lewis completely uh, did the unthinkable again, uh, actually broke uh, the all time record. No, actually, did he break the record or he already had the record for heavyweight knockouts? But now he's tied for first overall in the UFC at 12, I think tied with Vitor Belfort. Um, so he floors Curtis Blades in highlight real fashion. Also, you had uh, Chris uh, Dawkins make a big step up, defeating Alexi Olenek. And then we had, um, make sure I pronounce this man's name right, Tom Aspinall, defeating Andre Arlovsky by submission. A lot of movement in heavyweight. Man, is this the most exciting heavyweight has been in the UFC? Um, it has been for a while. Um because there's a lot of interesting scenarios that can play out. I'm sure we'll jump into here in a second, but it really is because a lot of guys are, are doing, you know, like you said, the unthinkable when a lot of people had Derek Lewis, for example, just not being able to compete with the Curtis blades. Everybody's like, he's Curtis blades is faster. He's, he's, he's a better wrestler. He's, you know, more aggressive. You know, he, he can really just take the fight wherever he wants to sort of thing. Well, yeah, Derek Lewis has a pretty big equalizer in his hands. Um, you know, that's why I picked him to win. The only guy on this here channel at the body lock to do so. I just forgot Feather to my submit cap. my picks. I forgot to okay. submit my picks again. We'll see. There but you I, go. But I, there is video evidence of my picks. So go right ahead. True. And, yeah. Very true. Very true. So, yeah. yes, the only two people here at the body lock that <laughs> picked Derek Lewis to win. But, you know, it's, it's interesting because not only does Derek Lewis once again – propel himself into the title pitcher, but there is such a log jam at the top of the division right now with so many different scenarios that can take place um, to create interesting title fights and title fight scenarios. And that's without John Jones interjecting his name into the conversation. But we don't know when that's happening because at any moment, John Jones can pop up and say, Hey, I'm ready. Send, send contract Dana. Let's go. And then all of a sudden John Jones has to be, in a title fight or a number one contender fight at the very least, not to mention what's going on with, you know, Jar 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 Jarzino Rosenstrike, Derek Lewis, um, the Francis and Ganos and Steve Bates. We don't know what's how that's all going to shake out right now. So a lot of interesting questions to be asked. And right now, if I'm a guy like Derek Lewis, I I'm, I found myself in a good spot, but one of the things that did concern me, after the fight, which actually could have helped the UFC, was his continued call out of Alistair Overeem. Because if they book that fight, then the UFC has a little bit of pressure off their back. Be like, whew, okay, we don't have to put Derek Lewis in the title conversation right now. We can go ahead and book this, keep, keep those two guys busy, and let the rest of this division shake out. Yeah, that's um, that's an intriguing thing right there. Stylistically, that is a, a an interesting matchup to put on. It just doesn't make sense as far as uh, the division's moving. But one thing I think we, we do need to remember, like you did say, John Jones is a factor in this, whether or not he's made his heavyweight debut is another story. But I think that's going to be the main factor in determining what they do with Derek Lewis. So if John Jones, who last we heard was on Twitter saying, maybe I won't, uh, maybe I'll fight in the UFC, maybe not, or, you know, continued whatever contract disputes are going on. If that continues and he is on the shelf for a considerable period of time, um, maybe maybe it makes sense to have Derek Lewis fight the winner of uh, Stipe Ngannou. Um, that would make a whole lot of sense to me. And also, too, if, if the thing is, if Lewis wants to remain active, Overeem is I, I don't want to say a safer matchup. But it's but we definitely see a clear path to victory for him there. Um, so you could hesitatingly make that fight and and reserve some level of confidence that Lewis will walk out of it still in title contention. There's also the winner of this weekend's uh, Rosenstruck and Cyril Gain fight or Cyril Gain fight. Um, would be a, a, a viable uh, person for him to fight as well. So I, I think really John Jones is the X factor here, no matter what, what it depends on what John Jones does. And I think another X factor too is how is Lewis's health? Um, 
you know, he's someone who has had a lot of injuries throughout his career and his, the back and the legs have plagued him and stuff for so long. And while he has said, although he said this a million times that he's gotten all that cleared up and now he's the healthiest he's ever been, best shape of my life, blah, blah, blah. He he also seemed like that front leg uh, took a battering in that round and a half or so that he was standing in front of Curtis Blades. Um, I, I I can recall a few times where it looked like he was trying to plant his foot and it looked like he couldn't put the weight on it and the, the foot was sliding uh, across the canvas. Like if, if he hurt himself pretty bad, I mean, that would be another case where he's like, all right, just sit him down for a second and let the title picture play out. Let him heal up. And then if, you know, healthy and ready, uh, bring him back in there, fight the winner of Stipe and, and Ngano. No, yeah, that's a good point. And one thing I think a lot of people don't realize, uh, there's still a lot of people that don't give leg kicks the credit they deserve. And we think about heavyweights like, oh, yeah, you can only take a certain number of punches when it comes to, you know, strikes to the head from a heavyweight. It usually takes a couple and you're out. I mean, that's that same applies to the leg kicks. Think back to the Stipe and Junior Dos Santos fight. Junior landed like two leg kicks on Stipe and his leg was swollen up. And Junior lost the fight in like what a couple of minutes in the first round. So it's the same applies. Like those are some heavy, heavy ass legs chopping at another man's legs. They're going to cause a lot of severe damage very quickly. So, yeah, I think that that's something that we got to watch out for with Derek Lewis. And I think, you know, the interesting thing with him is we're never going to know the full story because he's such he's such a troll. We'll never know if he's really hurt. We'll never know if he's really 100 percent. And then he goes out there and plays possum all the time, too. We, we will never know. Derek Lewis could have been fighting at 50 percent last weekend, and we would have never known. We would have never known. He looked like he was fighting at 50 percent until he wasn't. So um, until I guess until Blades had zero percent like that, that really seemed to be uh, what happened. I mean, it's like fighting Derek Lewis. It almost seems like if you're playing a, a fighting video game against somebody, and they just hit you one time and your health meter disappears. Like that's that's what happened Saturday night. So yeah. um it's crazy to think that Derek Lewis has entered rarefied air from a statistics excuse me, a statistical standpoint, like something that's irrefutable. So it, I think we should be beyond the conversations of how good is Derek Lewis. I think the question now should be, how great is Derek Lewis? Mm -hmm. Undefeated in Black History Month, 6-0. and oh. oh, don't you love it? Don't you gotta you love it. it. Gotta love it. But yeah, he, he is a guy that he's proven himself to be at, you know, where he is in the place in division, top five guy. It's just about, can he get that matchup at the right time with the guy that's holding the title? Um, but the problem is, I think he's just going to run into someone that is just more aggressive and is smarter with their tools than than he is at times you know with daniel cormier for example when he got his title shot just a smarter fighter you know with with better skills um if he runs into stipe it's going to be the same thing not saying that he can't win those fights but again he'll find himself in an underdog situation if that occurs but he definitely deserves that place where he's at right now at the top five um he also deserves to be in the conversation for a title shot. And if this fight, like you said, this weekend between Gunn and Rosenstruck doesn't pr produce something spectacular, I think the UFC has to step in and say, no, nah, we're not doing Overeem for you. We're going to keep you ready for a title shot if something happens with these other guys. Uh, def definitely good observation there. And then you, you think, depending on how that fight, excuse me, this Saturday plays out, like say Rosenstruck uh, gets out of that fight. Well, you know, and has got, a win over him, a very recent win over him. Um, it, it, so, it, so even still, um, if Rosenstruck goes out there and tornado kicks uh, Cyril Gaon and, and, you know, this is the most spectacular thing we've ever seen, I mean, there's still a, a strong uh, conversation to be had about whether he would deserve a title shot because especially if Nganu wins um, when, uh, when he rematches Stipe, well, it, it makes Rosenstruck seem like much less of a viable challenger. So there, there's so many ways this can branch off. But no matter how you slice it, Derek Lewis is up there in that conversation. And for my money, I think, you know, in a world without John Jones, he is um, the next in line for the belt, in my opinion. 
Yeah, you know what? I, I can't. It's hard to argue with that. It really is. And like I said at the top of this, man, there's so many different interesting directions this thing can go. It really is the most interesting the division's been in, in quite some time. And like we said, with that wild card of John Jones just popping his head up and being like, surprise, I'm ready. And then that's just going to shake everything up. So it, it's hard not to be a fan of the heavyweight division right now. And we really got to appreciate it while we can, because there's been a, there's been times where the heavyweight division is just not interesting. So I'm glad it is where it is right now. And like, like you also said, with guys that are coming up in the ranks too, um, like this past Saturday with with impressive wins. Yeah, there's there's still a few fights away from being you know top ten, top five guys. But it's interesting to see these guys climb the ranks and do so impressively. Um, these are the guys that are building those resumes. So for all you guys out there that you know, if you're, I would assume that if you're watching this video, you're a prelim fighter watcher. But that's that's where we discover these fighters, right? We discover these guys on the prelims. We watch their performances, see how they look, and see if they have that 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 it factor, so to speak, of a guy that can break into that top five. And I don't know if those guys are ready just yet, but they have the potential to be. So it's something something to keep your eye out on. Yeah, well said. And um, man, uh, heavyweight is pretty damn exciting right now, and I can't wait to see what's up next. 